Good morning. Good morning. I don't know about you guys, but today uh, is the first time that this felt like before. Yes. Right? Amen. For what that's worth. Um, I don't know how, what, what it's uh, the joy you experience in worshiping together like we, like we have been. Uh, but, but for me, it's a little extra special because I now remember what it was like before. Anyway, it's good. It's good to be here. Um, appreciate we're not fully finished with the remodel in here. Uh, we have uh, a, a new communion table that will house some uh, our projector and some equipment. And, and uh, David White is graciously uh, a building. Actually, he's finished it, and, uh, but some finishing touches on that. So a few extra things. It's really nice in here. It's brighter. The, the lighting, uh, Stephanie said it makes me look even more handsome. And I, I didn't think that's possible, but that's what she said. That's what she said. And so I, I, I think it's good. I think it's really good. We are blessed for sure. Uh, imagine with me a world with no selfishness, uh, no hatred, a world where people respected each other, where a person's word meant something, a world where people didn't lie, they didn't gossip, they didn't steal, they did not kill, they did not take advantage of others, a place where there is no envy or rivalry or jealousy or lust or fornication or adultery or modesty, a world where there's kindness and love and peace and joy, no disease, no hunger, no loneliness, no sadness, uh, a, pe a place that would be very peaceful and very joyful. And of course, I'm talking about heaven. But when I, when I start thinking and when I, when I started asking you to imagine these things, if you're like me, your mind went to this world. In other words, that's right. If people, why can't this place be like that, where people treat each other with kindness and love and respect. And why, why can't we get along better? Why cannot we, we, we have more uh, peace here and joy here? And there's a reason for that. First John 5, 19 tells us, uh, John writes, he says, We know that we are from God and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. I keep, I keep wondering why people can't act better. Why they can't be kinder, more courteous, more respectful. Uh, do you ever do that? Do you ever see people acting wrongly and you just scratch your head and you think, what is wrong with people? Well, God has been telling us for years what's wrong with people. And the answer is Satan. He's the prince of this world. He, is, he, is, he has uh, great victories on this planet. Not, we're not talking about physical battles. We're talking about spiritual battles. But those do bleed in to violence uh, and physical things. But Satan is winning on this planet. And it's not that God's not working. It's that when people are given a choice, good or evil, uh, self-control or self-indulgence, right? You, you understand that. Our world easily follows after what Satan is selling them. And so to start out with, let us not be confused why people act up. Why they act wrong, why they act rudely. Let us no longer ever say, I just don't understand why people can't act better. Because God has already told us Satan is working and people are allowing that. And, and we keep trying to make this place heaven. Uh, I do. I keep trying to make I keep trying to make the little world around me better, and, and we we seek that in different ways. We think, well, if we just had if we could do this, and maybe we'll plan that. And if this would be we could this would be so much better, wouldn't that be great? And maybe a better job or a better whatever. Um, we keep wanting to make this place heaven, and it's not. So let's talk about what will heaven be like. A little more about that. No suffering. No pain. The older you get, by the way, there's more pain coming, young folks. Amen. Amen. There's more pain coming. No worries. No fears. 
No worry. We've been worried the past year about illness and suffering and death. None of that will be in heaven. Uh, no financial worries. No, uh, we worry about the moral decline in America, don't we? It grieves us. It grieves God. It grieves God worldwide, not just America. We worry about that. No more in heaven. No temptation. No sadness. No regret. The older you get, the more regrets you will have, right? Uh, if you don't have very many regrets, just keep living. Because, right, you'll make mistakes. You'll fall short. You will look back and say, I don't know why I didn't do this different or better. And maybe you didn't even know, but you'll still regret and beat yourself up about it. No disappointments in heaven. Do you ever get disappointed? Um, anyone married? Did anyone get married and have a, an image in your mind of what married life was going to be? And, and you learn and people tell you there's a honeymoon phase. Watch out. And, uh, and so you learn there's a difference between fantasy and reality. And right? It's life. You are married to a flawed individual. Uh, you ever plan a trip and you go on the trip and what you dream the trip would be like is not exactly what it ends up being like. Disappointed. This past summer, we, uh, we took the girls to uh, Orange Beach, Alabama, and it was Sydney's senior year, so that's where she wanted to go. She wanted to go to the ocean, so we had not done that as a family, and we drive down there and do that, and before we went, I had these thoughts in my mind of how great this was going to be. I had uh, not really been to the ocean like, like down there, and uh, in my mind, you know, I, I'd seen pictures and I just had, uh, you know, how wonderful this was going to be. And did you know the ocean uh, is not always clean? <laughs> and there's sometimes a lot of other people there. And sometimes it rains and sometimes it's really windy. And uh, so anyway, I had these in my mind and, and even leaving the beach, we, we stayed at a place on the beach. So we, we leave from the ocean, we go back to our room. And when you go back, there's a, you go on the boardwalk and there's a place to rinse off the sand from your feet, you know, from your, uh, and your, and your legs. And so you do that and man, this is great. This is nice. And then you get your clean and, and uh, sand free sandals back on and you're walking and, and halfway to your room. I don't know how, but sand got back in my sandals and this is not comfortable at all. Uh, our elevator near our room was out. I had in, in my mind uh, visions of us. We'll just kind of cruise down the highway here near the coast, you know, like in the pictures. And would you believe there's other people there and a lot of traffic bumper to bumper. You're not going anywhere fast. Disappointment. You understand disappointment. This life is full of disappointments. And heaven will not be that way. Uh, young people, no more tests in heaven. No more tests. No more school projects. Uh, grown people, no more projects. House projects. Things that need to be repaired, fixed. Is your car making a weird noise? I've got one that's got something coming up. Uh, 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 it's, got, it's got some things in its future. None of that. <clears throat> no more stressful responsibilities. Only time with God's people, with God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. What will that be like? We get, I think we get a little picture of it. Imagine, I don't, I don't know, you know, we're physical. I don't know exactly what it will be like in heaven where it's all spiritual. But um, we haven't been hugging. I'm a hugger, but, you know, I miss that uh, in this pandemic. We, there are things that we can't do as humans that are just a natural um, you know, exchange of love for each other. And in heaven, what will it be like? You know, Jesus told the parable about the prodigal son and the father was watching for the son. And when he saw the son a far way off, he ran to him. When God says, good, enter in, good and faithful servant, will, will, you, will we embrace God the Father? Will we embrace God the Son? Will we embrace God the Spirit? Think about those things. When I was young and I thought about heaven, <clears throat> about heaven, my thought was, yes, I want to go there. Not today. Wasn't 
wasn't ready, and it wasn't because I uh, wasn't, you know, in harmony with God. It was I had things in this life I still wanted to experience. There's some things I still want to do. And heaven is for eternity, and, and you know, when this life's over, this life is over. And so I had that mentality. And I, I even knew at the time, Elliot, that's pretty foolish. I knew up here, right? <clears throat> because heaven will be so perfect, anything joyful here will be a, a small comparison. And I knew that mentally. Now I've lived, old, I'm older now, and now, now my heart is caught up with my head, what my head already knew, and, and I fully, my attitude now is, come quickly. And, and the only, the only um, thing that holds that back any is trying to, we're to reach the lost, and when Jesus comes, whoever's lost then, they're lost for eternity. <clears throat> but outside of that, the, the attitude we have, what is your attitude about heaven? And do we think about heaven? So my one point for you this morning is focus on heaven more. Think about heaven more. We need to dream about it more. We daydream about a lot of things, don't we? Don't you think about things in the future, things you want to do or want to change or improve or whatever? We need to daydream about heaven more. And when we do, some things will change. One is, uh, we will become, I think we'll become a little, I think we'll become less irritated with other people. Yesterday we went to, uh, Abby had a, a volleyball tournament. Anyone been to this place called Titan over by Tulsa Hills? Anyone been there? This is a, this is a ginormous sports facility for kids sports. So on one it's back behind Tulsa Hills. On one end of it are volleyball and basketball courts. So yesterday they, had, they have 16 volleyball courts on one end. And then there's a massive metal part, and then there's some soccer stuff on the other end. Um, and then there's soccer fields outside. This place is enormous, and there are people everywhere. Well, we get there at, at 8 o'clock, and... Uh, so we're dropping Abby off and I'm actually not even in a hurry because we drop her off before we have to be there. And so, which that's odd that I wasn't in a hurry, but I did get frustrated because as we go to drop her off, there's a car in front of us and, and that car comes to a stop and then we pull up, we come to a stop. What does my child do? She opens her door, she gets out, shuts the door. I'm ready. What's complicated about this? I have a pet peeve and I'm not proud of it. I'm working on it. We all have pet peeves. Okay. But my pet peeve is when, and that's this developed over years, dropping my kids off at school. My pet peeve is when you drop your off kid, kid off at school and people in front of me. So this car stopped. Abby's out, door shut. This car door hadn't even opened yet. Finally, front passenger door opens. Foot comes out. Another foot comes out. Kid comes out. Stand up. They turn around. They start digging in the car, gathering up their items, you know. Well, meanwhile, my head is... 19 Mississippi, 20 Mississippi. I mean, how many Mississippis we need to get out? Anyway, at one point, finally, the, the father, he gets out of the driver's side because he's got to help get little Junior out this left side. Anyway, I thought that would already been done. Took forever. I just say that it's just a small example of what frustration feels like. That's small. I know that. I know that's my issue. I get that. Frustration. Do you ever get frustrated? Don't look at anyone else. Don't elbow somebody or point a finger. I'm asking each of us. We understand frustrations. I think if we think about heaven more, we will be less frustrated. Look at this. 1 Peter 2, 9 says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood. We've been <clears throat> in America over the past... Well over 100 years, our nation has been working toward equality of people. In other words, the idea that people would be treated with respect regardless of who they are. Right? Equality. We understand that. And, that, and that's all complicated. Okay? But in it, at its core, it is a noble thing 
to have a society where people are treated with respect. And that continues in our nation. And so it's drilled into us. We're the same. We are the same. We are the same. People are all the same, right? We're all equally, equal in value. And then God says, you're different. You are a chosen race. You are a royal priesthood. We are royalty in Christ, spiritually. You think about what royalty means in nations that have a, a, a class system. I don't really understand that. We, are, we have eternal royalty. A holy nation. A people for his own possession. That's God. We belong to God. We are different it, we keep wondering, why do people not act better? Why can people not get their kid? Tell your kid to get your stuff together while we're pulling into this parking lot. It takes you five minutes to pull into this place and get to the front door anyway. Get your kid's stuff ready. Why can't you do that? We keep asking ourselves, why, can, why do people not know any better? Why can, they not, why can people not just be honest? And we're trying, we're trying naively... To get the world to be like us. Guess what? We're different. We have a Father in heaven who teaches us how to be holy. Amen. We have a Savior who walked this earth. We have four biographies about Him. The Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that tell us what it looks like to be a child of God and a Christian. We know better. Right? We have a Savior. We have a God. We have a Spirit to walk with us. Uh, the world doesn't. The world doesn't. They're rolling with the devil. That's how, they, that's how they're living. And let's read on. And I want to make a point about this. Verse 11 says, Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh. That's what the world is not abstaining from sin. We are to abstain, sojourners and exiles. Holman translates this, strangers and temporary residents. We really don't belong here. I mean, we are here. God, Jesus called us to be here in the world. We're not to go make a, uh, you know, a, a place and, and pull away from society and have a, a, where we isolate from the rest of the world. No, we're to be in the world, but we're different. We don't, this is not our permanent residency. We, we are citizens here, but not really. We enjoy and it's a privilege to be an American citizen. Paul, the Apostle Paul was a Roman citizen, and that was a privilege, and he used that at, at certain times. But it's real, this is not really our place. Heaven is. We are just passing through. And if I had that in my head more, if I thought about heaven more, then when I roll up and someone acts oblivious to people around them, however rudely someone might be, and that's not a, I know that's not a big thing, but however rudely people might act, if I thought about heaven more, I would remember, you know what, Elliot? Those folks, they're not like you. They don't know better. And by the way, you're not, Elliot, this really isn't your eternal home anyway. You have a job to do here. And you're to be here just for a time. All right, if we think about heaven more, it keeps us on track as well. 1 John 2.15 says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life. So when John talks about the world, he's not talking about earthly things that are, um, you know, innocent and pure in and of themselves. He's not talking about enjoying a sports game uh, or a hobby or something you might like to do. He's talking about sinfulness. But the world lives that way and we don't. And look at verse 17. The world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. Our job is to do the will of God. That's our job. And if you think about heaven, if you want to go to heaven, you need to think about doing the will of God. Yeah. Guess what? That's who's, those are the people going to heaven. It, it, the world believes a lie that good people go to heaven. And the problem with that lie is, uh, number one, God never said that. Number two, none of us are good. And, and number three, all of us self-diagnose ourselves as good. We self-proclaim ourselves as good, right? All of us. And so that formula doesn't work. 
But doing the will of God does. That's what, that's what Scripture tells us. And then thirdly, the more I think about heaven, the more it keeps us focused on our job. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. So what was Jesus' kingdom? He set up his kingdom. He did it with the cross, death, burial, resurrection, Jesus' kingdom. It's not the Jewish nation that was God's people and that was a kingdom, but that was a, a, that was a precursor to the eternal kingdom, the church. This. Isn't it, weird? Isn't it weird? I know this doesn't seem... Hmm. This is special, but we don't understand how special this is. And I don't just mean a worship service. I mean God's people as a group. This is what Jesus died for. This is the bride of Christ. This is God's kingdom. It's the kingdom that Jesus set up. So our job is to save souls. Our job is to be involved. I uh, appreciate Zach preaching last week and, and talking about the importance of us staying connected, being involved. Um, or two weeks ago, it's pandemic or no pandemic. We need to be connected. We need to be involved with the body of Christ, encouraging people, serving, seeking the lost. Do you know anyone that's not ready to meet Jesus? We're on the clock, aren't we? We're on the clock regarding that. Because when Jesus comes again, that's it. Time is done. So thinking about heaven brings all those things into focus. And then finally, it lessens our fear of death and grief. Uh, and death, of course, is, is man's greatest fear. Look at this. Have you ever have you seen this picture before? I like this because uh, a picture's worth a thousand words, right? Me leaving the work day before vacation. Yeah, I love this girl. She is, she is after it. She's getting somewhere and anxious to get there, right? So Philippians 3.20 says, Our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior. Uh, the New American Standard, the New King James, and the NIV, all three translate eagerly await a savior how eager are we for heaven the more we think about heaven the less we will fear death because we realize death is just the doorway to what we really want and what we're really destined for heaven is so much greater than this world when someone dies and they're in christ that is a beautiful thing and yes we still grieve of course we miss them and we hurt and we, and we struggle, uh, but we, what a celebration for the one that's in Christ that gets to step into eternity. Are we anxious for that? Are, are there any, any people you want to see? Uh, I haven't seen my grandparents in a while, and I would, I would like to see uh, my mother's parents, Reuben and Dixie Spencer. I don't know what they're called in heaven. Maybe we get heavenly names. I don't know. That's what I, but that's who I'm going to look through the directory for up there is Reuben and Dixie Spencer. <clears throat> and then uh, my dad's parents, Leland and Nova Dunn. I haven't seen my grandparents in a while. I'd like to see them. I believe they are there. And I want to make a quick point, a very important one. And that is, we don't know who's there because God makes that decision. God is the judge. I, I may have done, I may have had one or two at the most encounters with people who worried that their loved one was not in heaven because we have this widespread concept that when one of our loved ones dies, they're automatically in heaven because, and I think it's because we kind of adopt this lie of the world that all good people go to heaven. And I've never preached a funeral where I got up and said, this person was a rotten scoundrel folks, but we're gathered here to honor them. So everyone is a, right? Who's in heaven? Ask God that question. Make sense? And so I don't have, well, I'm not in the place to preach anyone into heaven or into hell. That's God's, that's God's deal. But God told us in his word that wide is the gate that leads to destruction. So most people will not make it to heaven. God's word also teaches us that on judgment day, God will separate the weeds uh, from the crops in the church. That some that are in the church are lukewarm and will not be in heaven. And that's sobering. 
But I, I, I just have to make that point because when I talk about, I want to see my grandparents, guess what? I hope they're there. I would like to say I know they're there because of A, B, and C, and I could make out a, right? But I'm not God, and I don't want to get in his seat. He's, he can have, he's, that's his seat. He's going to stay there. Um, I want to see David Almy. <clears throat> David would come in my office, and he'd tell me stories like I told about the car in front of us that the kids took forever to get out of and how frustrating it was. David would come in and tell me about some, he'd be frustrated about something. He'd, he'd go on and on a, a little bit. And then he'd walk over to the door and he'd turn around and say, oh, in a hundred years, I'll slap my knee and laugh. Because <laughs> it won't matter. Uh, I want to see Pat Thompson. I want to see Pat Thompson. And I might be inclined, if Jesus came today and, and today's the day, and, and, and God uh, tells me, come in, good and faithful servant, and I hope and pray he does, and if Pat's there, and I hope and pray she is, and I trust she is, I believe she is, it, you understand that. I may be inclined to go up and say, Pat, I got to tell you a couple things. There's been some things happen with OU football since you passed. <laughs> Listen, Pat, we've had, some, we've had a run of quarterbacks you wouldn't believe. And I might be inclined to tell her about a guy named Baker Mayfield. Pat, you'd have loved, loved how he played. And then after him, he won the Heisman, by the way. And after him, there's a guy named Kyler Murray, Pat. This guy. Anyway, and, and I, I might even throw in Spencer Rattler. I could bring her up to date on what's been going on with something she really enjoyed in this life. And yet, I'm convinced she would interrupt me and say, Elliot, let me tell you about this place. None of that. None, I, I know what you're saying. I, 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 that's fine. Let me tell you about this place. I'm convinced... Heaven will be so wonderful, and we will be so spiritually united with God like never before, like we've never been truly right spiritually, that things of this life that we think are so wonderful and important will pale so far in comparison, we will consider it rubbish. We'll laugh at it. I think we'll laugh at it. Heaven. We need to think about heaven more. We're going to sing a song of encouragement this morning. And uh, it's a good song to end on today. Let's think about this. This is why we're here. We've given our life to Christ. We've united ourselves with God. And God said he's going to prepare a place. He made paradise in the Garden of Eden in six days. It didn't take him six days, but that's right. Six days. God's been working on heaven, if you want to think of it that way, for roughly, roughly 6,000 years. And then that's just human. This is just human, trivial, childish talk. But heaven is awesome. That's the point. And if you have a need this morning, we'd love to help you with it. If someone's, if you're not ready to face judgment, and and you want to give your life to Christ, have your sins washed away in baptism. If you want us to pray for you, uh, if you need something, make it known to us. Come forward while we stand and sing. I have a home prepared where the saints abide just over in the glory land. And I long to be by my Savior's side just over in the glory land. Just over in 